OpenXML enables integration of business data with content, you can give semantic meaning to content which enables you to make smart documents. There are two features of OpenXML which enable this integration of business data. The first is custom XML parts and the second is content controls. Custom XML parts enable you to embed any arbitrary XML as a part in the OpenXML package. Content controls enable you to delineate regions of text in an OpenXML word processing ML document and you can optionally bind that text to XML in a custom XML part. There are three primary scenarios for content controls. First is binding data to those custom XML parts. The second is delineation of data within an OpenXML word processing ML document. You can then write programs that process that data in interesting ways. And the third scenario for content controls is delineation of content. You can then process that content in interesting ways. This video shows examples of these three scenarios. Here is a simple word processing document that makes use of content controls. If I go to the developer tab and I turn on design mode, then you can see these tags that you can surround content in an OpenXML document to give semantic meaning to that content. In this particular case, there are a number of fields that are identified in this document, including the customer ID, name, company name, and so on. Let's look at the markup associated with this document. I'm going to open the main document part and format the XML so that it's easier to examine. If we drop down here, you can see the W colon SDT element in the word processing ML. This is the element that represents a content control. You can see here that a content control has an alias and a tag. This alias and tag are visible and maintainable in the word processing ML document. Another key point about this is that you can define a data binding element and with this data binding element you can define an XPath expression. In addition to that XPath expression you need to specify this store item ID which is a GUID. Those elements refer to a custom XML part. We can see here that the main document part has a relationship to item1.xml which is a custom XML part. If we look at item1.xml we can see the data that was associated with all of those content controls in the document. If we change the data in the document this XML will change and if we change this XML that data will change. Let me show you. I'll change contact name to Eric White. I'll close it and open up the template document and you can see that the name has been updated. Further, I can modify it here, save the document, look at the document again in Visual Studio and you can see that the contact name has been updated in the custom XML part. This separation of business data from the presentation of that business data is a very compelling value proposition for OpenXML. It enables a lot of interesting scenarios. These features of OpenXML allow us to write very simple programs that do very powerful things. Let's look at the custom XML part again. You can see the schema for this custom XML part. It has a customer, customer ID, contact name, company name, and so on. 
Here I have a data file. It's an XML file. I'll open it. And in here you can see that underneath the root element of data there are a number of customers. Each one of those customers have the same set of child elements that you saw in the custom XML part. Customer ID, contact name, company name, and so on. You saw the bidirectional nature of data that is stored in the custom XML part that you can change the data in the part and see the resulting changes in the document and you can change the document and see the resulting changes in the data. This allows us to write a very simple little C Sharp program. This C Sharp program loads that data file. It reads the template document into a byte array and then it iterates through every child customer element in that data XML tree. It does a bit of housekeeping such as creating a memory stream, writing the byte array for the template document into the memory stream, and then it can open up that document using the OpenXML SDK. Once it has that document open, it can go find that custom XML part, get the stream for that custom XML part, and stream out that customer composite element to the custom XML part. It then creates an output file name as a string and writes the memory stream out to the output file name. It then increments the count and repeats. This is a super simple program. The entire listing is here on one page. If I run it, it of course runs very quickly. I can then open up these documents and I can see that in fact each one of these documents has data updated. The approach that I just showed you is only one approach that you can take to use content controls to generate documents. Another interesting approach is one where you create a template document and in that template document you insert content controls and in those content controls you enter XPath expressions that refer to data in a data document. Let's look at that data document for a minute. Here's that data document. It contains a root element of customers and then multiple child elements of customer. And within each customer element, there are child elements that define values for that particular customer. And there are a list of orders for each customer. Back in the template document, if we navigate down to the bottom of the template document, there is a content control with a tag of config. And in this content control, there is some XML that defines how this document generation process should work. It specifies the data file name. It specifies an XPath expression that the document generation engine uses to select all the records for which documents will be generated. So this XPath expression selects all of the customer elements underneath the customers element and one document will be generated for each one of those child customer elements. It specifies a bit of other miscellaneous information such as the directory to place the generated docs. Then for each one of those customers, the XPath expression inside of these content controls, those XPath expressions operate in the context of each one of the customer elements that was selected by the XPath expression that selected all the documents. Using this approach, it's pretty easy for a power user to create an XML file, create a template document, and then generate a whole bunch of documents from that template document. It eliminates or at least reduces the need for developers to create a document generation solution. Let's run this example.
it generated 3,000 documents in less than 30 seconds. And if I come over here to the generated docs directory, I can examine these generated documents and see that the data was correctly inserted into those generated documents. Generating documents is not by any means the only use case for content controls. You can use them to identify content for any purpose in an OpenXML word processing ML document. In this next example, I'm going to demonstrate OpenXML Code Tester. OpenXML Code Tester would be useful to a documentation writer who needs to write a whole bunch of documentation that has a lot of code in it. One of the problems that documentation writers encounter is that as underlying libraries change, their code in their documentation or in their book that they're writing becomes invalid. Documentation or book writers often then end up doing a laborious manual process right before publication to go through and copy out every single example, compile it, run it, make sure the output is correct. Another approach is to put content controls in a document. This first content control with the tag of build specifies some metadata about the test. The second content control with a tag of 0001 contains the C-sharp code in this particular case that needs to be compiled and run. Further down here, there's another content control that has a tag of 0001 out, and this is the expected output of the code in the above content control. What this allows us to do is to run a program that goes into the OpenXML word processing ML document, find all of these content controls, assemble each snippet into a compilable program, compile the program, run it, collect the output, and compare the output to the output that is listed in the document. This really helps a lot for documentation writers or for book writers to create books that have high quality code examples. Let's run this example. It's doing a fair amount of work here, so it takes a few seconds to run. There it's finished. What it had to do is it had to collect all of that code out of the word processing document. It had to then assemble that code into a compilable snippet, compile it, run it, collect the output, and validate it. It then produces a report indicating the pass-fail status of each one of the tests. Here you can see that there were seven tests. There were 24 snippets associated with those seven tests. All seven tests passed. Here's a list of the pass-fail status of each test. Dropping down here, this example prints out detail about each one of the tests, including the assembled program and the run output. And if we drop down into the bin debug directory, we can find a subdirectory named test. And in this test, there is a subdirectory for each one of the tests that was run. If we drop into one of those subdirectories, you can see the C sharp code and you can see the compiled exe. The key point of this screencast is that custom XML parts and content controls enable you to build more sophisticated applications. Come to openxmldeveloper.org for more OpenXML content, including screencasts, articles, and blog posts. Follow OpenXML Dev on Twitter for more OpenXML news, and you can follow me at Eric White Dev for notification of all the screencasts, blog posts, and articles that I write.